Good afternoon, everybody, and we'll begin with the Regina Celli. Regina Celli, letare, alleluia, qui aqua meruisti porta, alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit, alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, Mary. Alleluia. For he whom thou did merit to bear, Alleluia, has risen as he said, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord is truly risen, Alleluia. Let us pray, O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of Christ, thy Son. Grant through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, we may come to share in the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And Lord, we ask you to help us to celebrate this Mass with pure hearts that we may see your face. O sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Jesus, Lamb of God, holy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, holy is your name. Jesus, I love you, holy is your name. Jesus, I love you, holy is your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the holy mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest, St. Bernardine of Siena, a great love for the holy name of Jesus, grant through his merits and prayers that we may ever be set aflame with the spirit of your love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escorts had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up at the Areopagus and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, I discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What therefore you unknowingly worshipped, I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made in human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth. And he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek God, even perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from any one of us. 
For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since therefore we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art and imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent. He has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice. Through a man he has appointed, and he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, we should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them, but some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysius, a member of the court of the Arab Areopagus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all you his hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too and maidens, old men and boys, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. He has lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the people of close to him. Alleluia. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share from the second reading from the Office of Readings today from our breviary because today is the feast day of St. Bernardine of Siena. St. Bernardine uh, lived in the 15th century, and he was a Franciscan, and uh, although he had a classical education, he felt a desire to give his life to serve uh, among the Franciscans, serving and helping the poor. And also, but he was um, a man of, of eminent uh, theology, and uh, he wrote treatises and sermons and letters and commentaries, and so he's often quoted, um, especially among the Franciscans, and um, one of his 
most uh, particular traits that marked his own theology and his own spirituality was his belief in the power of the name of Jesus. He, he preached the power of the name of Jesus. And I want to share with you a, a nice testimony. You can actually find this testimony. And it's on that uh, website where I, I gave that testimonial that was posted on our Facebook page. That's um, a series called May for Mary. And it was by uh, a guy who has a company called Kari Films, which is spelled C-H-A-R-I Films. Well, the founder of that, or the, the one who is the videographer for Kari Films, is a guy called Justo Diaz. And um, he has, his was the first testimony of May. And his testimony talks about really the power of faith. Um, but actually, it, it's, a, it's a great story. And I'll share with you, you can watch him giving the full account. But he's a young man and he's married, a beautiful wife, and they have one child. And he shares a story that he was not so dedicated to the rosary, um, man of faith, but he just didn't have, did not have that dedication. But uh, through the rosary, he got a special grace to use the power of the name of Jesus. And, and the story is that after his wife gave birth, she had a difficult condition in which her body was kind of almost like semi-paralyzed and she couldn't get out of bed. She literally couldn't move. Um, and it was scary. And it was their first child. They never had anything like that. She never had that situation. And she was, and the doctors were concerned that it wasn't normal and that she wasn't recovering um, like she should have recovered after birth. And it was, um, he was scared and he was, he was distraught and he had a beautiful child, but now his wife is, is having this reaction, which was scary for the both of them. And his wife had sort of encouraged him to pray the rosary. Um, and so he did. So he, he was praying the rosary. And he says, right out, you know, after praying the rosary, he got this inspiration. He had been reading in the Acts of the Apostles. Now, you know, we've been reading the Acts of the Apostles. It's, it's during the Easter time. That's our first reading throughout. We're going through the book. And it's a phenomenal book. With It's like a tremendous adventure stories. And, and it's, it's filled with amazing things that God did by the power of his grace and the power of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. And why do I say that? Because... You and I are supposed to be also continuing the tradition of the apostles. We're meant to be modern day apostles, right? Actually continuing the work of the church. And yes, maybe this quarantine is teaching you that you don't have to be a nun or a priest to do the work of the church. I know you know that, but really uh, I think just like they had, didn't have the support structures, right? Remember they went out preaching. They didn't have dioceses. They didn't have... Uh, you know, home-based parishes. They didn't have sacramental programs or catechetical programs. They just had the power of God in them preaching. And then the people that they spread the word to also did the same. And so I'm thinking, I'm desiring that you, who are like modern-day apostles, faithful to Jesus in the middle of not having the support structures that you're used to, would also take on the power of the Holy Spirit in you and go out and do the things, you know, with the power of God behind you and with you in whom you live and move and have your being, as St. Paul said, and spread the work of Jesus Christ in the world in however you do it, you know, whether you do it virtually or whether you do it in person or whether you do it, you know, in, in so, so, social distancing safely. But I think maybe that's one message you can take away from this is that God desires for you to do the apostolic work, right? And in and, and, and your circles of influence, okay. So what happened to him? He said, I prayed the rosary and immediately I felt this grace to just to go to the bedside of my, of, of my wife. Now, he had read that day. There's a passage in which uh, Paul and, 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 uh, and, and Silas, like we heard today, they're going out. But in this particular passage is when Peter's entering a town, and there's a paralytic on the ground. And he says, um, he says, silver and gold I do not have, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I say to you, pick up your mat, get up and, and walk. And it says the paralytic got up, and he walked, and he rejoiced. God. And he had read that, so I guess that was in the back of his mind. But he says, as he got to her bedside, um, he wasn't, he, he, he was not um, in total control of his own words. He says he, he wanted to pray with her, but he said it was the first time he felt like an utterance of the Holy Spirit came out of his mouth. Because he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, I say to you, get up and walk. He says, that, were not, he says, that was not my words. It was literally coming out of my mouth. But he said those were, that was an utterance of the Holy Spirit. Like he like uttered that through me. Because <laughs> he said, I wasn't planning on saying that it, it just came out. And he says, Father, my, my wife literally got up out of bed and she walked. He's like, it was literally like Peter 
performing this miracle in the modern day Acts of the Apostles. And it was in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So the name of Jesus used with radical faith is powerful. All right? We know it has power over demons. We know it has power over the devil. The name of Jesus causes fear and the enemy, but especially when used with faith. And that's the key. That's the key is have faith, my brothers and sisters. Have faith, real living faith, and then implore the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we should pray that very often, very often. And, 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 and before saying phrases, um, when we're going to give a, a petition, when we're going to ask for something, when we're going to make a declaration, let's do it in the name of Jesus. Right? In the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to send this evil away from my life. In the name of Jesus, I ask you to heal my sister, my brother, my friend, my mom, my dad. In the name of Jesus, I ask for freedom from my fears. In the name of Jesus, I, I declare myself to be a son of God, a daughter of God, and, and I'm going to walk in the freedom of the children of God. Right? In the name of Jesus, we will conquer this enemy. Whatever, whatever it is inspiring in your heart to say, use the name of Jesus as you pray. All right? Maybe some of you do already and it's automatic, but if it's not automatic and it's not a frequent name uh, that is coming out of your mouth, use it more often. You're going to see there's power in the name of Jesus to break, like that song says, you know, to break every chain. If you've never heard it, go on to YouTube after this Mass and put in the song, Break Every Chain. And, and the singer says, there, and I, I encourage you to listen to the Tasha Cobbs version. <laughs> All right, she's a powerful gospel singer. And there is power in the name of Jesus to break chains in our life. What's the chain in your life? What's the chain? Fear, right? Anxiety, worry, sickness, depression, addiction, right? Attachments. We all have chains. We all have chains. There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. So here I want to read from St. Bernardine of Siena. The name of Jesus is the glory of preachers because the shining splendor of that name causes his word to be proclaimed and heard. And how do you think such an immense, sudden, and dazzling light of faith came into the world if not because Jesus was preached? Was it not through the brilliance and sweet savor of this name that God called us into his marvelous light? When we have been enlightened and in the, name, in the same light behold the light of heaven, rightly may the Apostle Paul say to us, once you were in darkness, but now you are in light, and the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So this name must be proclaimed, that it may shine out and never be suppressed. But it must not be preached by someone with sullied mind or unclean lips, but stored up and poured out from a chosen vessel. That is why the Lord says of St. Paul, He is a chosen instrument of mine, a vessel of my choice, to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. That's it. You are supposed to be modern day St. Paul's, carrying his name wherever you go. Proclaim the name of Jesus fearlessly and with radical faith. And you're going to see miracles. You will start to see the things from the Acts of the Apostles happening in your life if you utter with faith and confidence the name of Jesus. Begin with yourself. Begin this day. Begin with your children. Begin with your, with your parents. Begin with your spouses. Begin with people you know in need of his grace. And declare them in the name of Jesus free, breaking chains, healing, performing miracles in the name of Jesus. God bless. Let us bring before God the prayers of our faith community today. For our Holy Church, may the Holy Spirit continue to deepen our love for God and strengthen our relationship with Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders and works, may God sustain them in wisdom and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from addiction or dependencies, may God's light be with them and may He help them in their struggles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, as we near the end of the Easter season, may God's grace continue to bring us into a deeper relationship, relationship with Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, all the sorrowing and the suffering, especially those sick with the virus, and all those attending to them, in the name of Jesus, may they be well. In the name of Jesus, may they get up out of their beds. In the name of Jesus, may they get off ventilators. In the name of Jesus, may they be cured of their cancers. In the name of Jesus, 
May they be restored with their families. In the name of Jesus, may their addictions and depressions be broken. In the name of Jesus, may there be freedom and healing for the sons and daughters of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all, all those who have died, we remember Benito Vera. May perpetual light shine upon them and may they rest in eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of this Mass, a living intention for Pat Capasso. For all of his needs, according to God's will, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now pause and invite you to offer your own private intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, your grace surrounds us. Hear the prayers we offer today, which we ask through the intercession of the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary. And through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we receive the bread we offer, your fruit of the earth and work of human hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have the want, this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we venerate the, in this, as we venerate the name of, your, your, of the Lord Jesus, we pray that the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, which we offer to your majesty in commemoration of Blessed Bernardine of Siena, that it may lead us to obtain pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uncelia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs, to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Ad nus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Ad nus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Ad nus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pacem. In the name of the body, blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, pray and truly to us from sin. In the name of the body, blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, no good, no judgment, condemnation, but eternal life, goodness, and people, protection, and bread. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
When I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light, says the Lord. What you have heard whispered, proclaim on the housetops. Alleluia. Now have our moment of spiritual communion. I invite you to consider closing your eyes to pray this prayer with sincerity and faith. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you are already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. By the power of this mystery, O Lord, confirm your servants in the true faith, that they may everywhere profess in word and deed the faith for which Blessed Bernadine never ceased to labor and for which he spent his whole life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for being here today, as always. It's great to have our our crew. You all are so faithful, so many of you here every day, and those who can't get here every day when you can. And um, it's a, such a great uh, uplifting thing for us as priests to know that so many people in their homes and in their communities are remaining like rock solid faithful in the middle of uh, what is an extraordinarily trying time for everybody. So I thank you and I hope that those graces are going to sustain you. And, and God willing, you know, the time will be coming when we'll be back together in person. Let's pray uh, this will happen in in mid-June, that's what we're looking like, and at least for the New York State, but hopefully, who knows, God's will be done. But in the meantime, um, we want to continue to invite you to participate with us. We're going to have the Mass tomorrow. We'll have, um, a, actually, for Ascension Thursday, um, special extra prayers, the Gloria, the Creed, two readings, because it's a Holy Day of Obligation, but the, of course the obligation has been removed because of the situation, but of course we invite people to participate uh, since it's a great feast to the church, uh, celebrating the Ascension. Then, starting Friday night at our 8 p.m. Rosary, we're going to begin nine days of prayer to the Holy Spirit, a special novena to the Holy Spirit with special preaching, uh, particularly focusing on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then we'll conclude that with um, a great event on Pentecost Vigil, uh, another Zoom event and uh, with musicians. And um, God willing, we'll all get together and it should be a great night. But in the meantime, on this Sunday, I want to invite you all to join us for the masses are going to be Zoom masses. And we invite you to try to go through Zoom. If not, it'll be broadcast simultaneously on Facebook. Why? Because we're going to do May crowning. And we're going to invite not just crowning our Mary, but we're inviting everybody who's listening and watching to whatever statue, small, large, huge, in your home to crown Mary, to create crowns this week, maybe of flowers or of lights or some kind of have the children involved to make little crowns out of construction paper, whatever it's going to be. But to crown Our Lady uh, through Zoom, and then we're going to be able to see through Zoom everybody's different uh, crownings, and it should be a nice event. So that's going to happen Sunday. We'll get the link out um, at least by Saturday, um, if not sooner, and uh, you'll, you'll see about that. It'll be on our face, Facebook page. So you can click in. And 
That's uh, for our 10.30 Spanish Mass and 12.30 English Mass. Okay. God bless you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Before we say our final blessing, let's pray our prayer for the protection of the Virgin Mary. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick. At the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, Our Lady of New York, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide so that, as you did in Cain of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our sufferings upon himself and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas. We who are put to the test, and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Jesus, Prince of Peace, holy is your name. Jesus, Prince of Peace, holy is your name. Jesus, save our souls, holy is your name. Jesus, save our souls, holy is your name.